This upgrade, it is the Creality Sonic Pad. And before you click that X button or you click that back button and leave, guys, please give me two minutes and I promise I will fire hose you with information so that you stay. Whether you have one printer or you have 30 printers, the Creality Sonic Pad is going to be an incredible, incredible upgrade to your setup. So start that two minute timer now where I begin to fire hose you with information. And the short answer is the Sonic Pad runs Clipper. And yes, Clipper can be run on a Raspberry Pi. I understand that. but. Clipper, it is a Wi-Fi based firmware, which means that your printer, whether it was stock Wi-Fi enabled or not, is now Wi-Fi enabled. The Sonic Pad will then be able to fix every single BL Touch issue you've ever had, whether it's from bed meshing or Z offsetting, it will fix every single issue. Like I mentioned, it will fix your Z offset issues. There are plenty of times that I've set the Z offset the best I could, but it really wasn't that good because the printer only allowed me to increment my Z offset by a tenth of a millimeter. And I know a tenth of a millimeter is pretty small, but in the 3D printing world, a tenth of a millimeter is gigantic. Now, if you have a printer that has an EEPROM that's saved on the SD card, this Sonic Pad is going to make your life like you're swimming in gold because the EEPROM is gone. It doesn't exist. It's replaced with something called a printer config file, and it's not saved on an SD card, so you have no concerns with losing an SD card or mixing the SD card up with a different printer. Another great thing about the Sonic Pad is you can now view print progress from anywhere in the house. You can be in your bedroom, you can be on the toilet taking a poop, it doesn't matter. If you want to check the progress of your Sonic Pad, you can pull up your phone or your iPad and look at the progress. If you have a camera, you can look at the progress physically. One of the most important things is you now have file structure and organization, which means it's like a Windows computer or a Mac. You can have folders to store your G-code and everything is organized and you know where all of your G-code files are. <sighs> okay. I have no idea what the timer was on all of that, but I fire hosed myself just recording the video. So hopefully I was within two minutes and hopefully I have now intrigued you and piqued your interest to stay and watch the rest of the video where I go into a little bit more detail on all of those topics. Before we go into any more detail, I just want to say this is not intended to be a full scale review of the Sonic Pad. This is merely supposed to be information and and just me telling you that the Sonic Pad has seriously, seriously improved the efficiency of my printers and of my small business. And I have worked with Creality in the past, but this video is not sponsored by Creality. They did not ask me to make this video. I have two Sonic Pads that I've purchased in full with my own money, and everything I'm saying in this video is from my own judgment. Let's skip from day one where I had one printer and day 10 where I had three printers directly to present day now where I'm standing in a room with 930 printers and at any given time I might have 10 to 15 printers in my possession. Everyone always knows that the first layer of a print is incredibly, incredibly important and I realized that very quickly and so I did what most people did and I bought a BL Touch. The BL Touch, if you don't know, it probes the bed in so many places, sometimes it's nine places, sometimes it's 49 places, it doesn't matter, but it probes the bed and it creates a mesh of your bed and it basically says that your bed looks like an ocean wave and your bed is not flat and you think it's a piece of glass and it should be flat, but it's not. And that's what a BL Touch is. And the way Marlin, most 3D printers run Marlin, the way Marlin operates is really, really bad. Oftentimes the bed gets probed, it saves all of those values and all of the specific details, the numbers, the engineering details, all of that into what's called an EEPROM. And you don't actually know if those numbers were saved or not. And then it gets even more complicated and detailed than that. Whenever your print starts, 
you don't actually know if it's using those numbers. So when you start a print and you're like, oh, I just auto leveled my bed with my BL touch. And then your nozzle is literally an inch above the build plate. Something's not right. And that's an issue with Marlin. And that's an issue with the implementation of Marlin on a large majority of printers that you see in this room. The Sonic Pad takes away all the question in the world about whether the BL touch is working or is not working, whether the BL touch is probing correctly or it's not probing correctly. It just works. See, the Sonic Pad, like I previously mentioned, it runs Clipper, and Clipper does a fantastic job of auto bed leveling. So whenever you actually probe the bed, you know that it probed the bed and then it saved the details. There's no more confusion about whether the BL Touch is gonna probe the bed before the print, or whether the printer firmware is gonna force the probe to probe the bed before the print. There's no more confusion about whether your Z offset is is going to be read incorrectly. There's no more confusion about if any of these settings were even saved previously when you already save the settings. Sometimes you think you saved settings and they didn't actually save. It is very, very clear within the Sonic Pad that you take these tests and they save correctly. All of that boils down to starting a print and your first layer is perfect every single time. It is dead perfect. So perfect you can actually look at the lead screw on the z-axis and you can see it spinning ever so slightly. It's just chef's kiss. It's just seriously, seriously amazing to know that I can be in the other room, start a print, and not be concerned at all whether it's going to stick to the build plate because I know the first layer is perfect. Owning as many printers as I do creates a serious complexity issue in terms of slicing. Now, you go and you slice a model when you own one printer, you slice it one time, and then you take your SD card, you put the file on the SD card, you go back to the printer, and you start printing. But when you own three or four or five different models of printers, well, the printers have different sizes and some of them are Bowden tube setups and some of them are direct drive setups and some of them are bigger and smaller and then they have different Bowden direct drive setups and some of them are this or that and some of them are just finicky and you need to have different settings. So when you have as many printer models as me, you need to slice the model for that printer, you need to slice the model for that printer, you need to slice the model for that printer, and then you need to slice the model for that printer. And it creates a really complex issue because every printer has an SD card, and now you need to make sure that specific SD card gets the very specific file that you sliced for it, because some of these SD cards, they save your EEPROM, and you don't want to slice the model for this printer, and then, by accident, pull the SD card from this printer and put it back in this printer that would be a bad day. You might not think that's something that's gonna happen very often, but again, when you have as many printers as I have, sometimes you try to cut corners, and instead of grabbing this SD card and saving the file, and then grabbing this SD card and saving the file, you'll just go and you'll grab three or four SD cards at once, you'll meticulously carry them to the computer, and you'll lay them out in a proper orientation, and you'll label them very carefully, and then you'll save the individual slice G-code files, and then you'll get over to the printer and you'll be like, is this Ender 3 or is this Prusa? I don't quite know. Needless to say, slicing is a total complex nightmare and there's no way around it at all. If you have SD cards, there's no way around it. Enter the Creality Sonic Pad, where you can plug four printers all into one, and the slicing complexity is made basically non-existent. Because now you can sit at your computer, you can type away, and you can click the slice button in Cura, and then you can open up your file explorer, you can click, and you can drag it into a very specific folder immediately. No waiting whatsoever. And then you can go to your next printer, which might be a completely different size and a Bowden setup and then you can slice for that printer and then immediately when it's done you can click and you can drag it onto the sonic pad the file transfer will commence and then you'll wait five seconds and it will be transferred before we go any further these videos are costly to make they're costly in terms of money and they're costly in terms of time and if today's video is getting you any value I would personally like to ask you to join 
join the community and subscribe to the channel. I oftentimes post videos very similar to this and I post a lot of entertaining YouTube shorts. I think you guys will find value in joining the channel. To touch on the file system just a little bit more, if you only have one printer per se, not, you know, 10. If you have one printer, the Sonic Pad still gives you value. What if you have one printer but three people use it? On the Sonic Pad, you can have a folder for mom, a folder for dad, and a folder for you. And then anytime someone goes to the Sonic Pad or goes to the 3D printer to print the file, all they have to do is navigate to the individual folder and click the file that they want to print. Now, your files are not interfering with someone else's files. Say you have a small business like I do, but you also want to print for personal gain, not only for business purposes. Well, now you can have a folder for personal files and a folder for business files. And then within either of those folders, you could have even more subfolders. In the business folder, what happens if I make prints for garage organization and kitchen organization? I can have two folders, one for kitchen organization and one for garage organization. And it just makes life really, really simple and easy. There's no confusion about what file you're printing because it's all laid out in the organization of the Sonic Pad. Of course, I have to touch on the lazy factor because we all like to sit in bed and watch TV and eat snacks in bed and sometimes we don't want to get up. Sometimes we just want to stay there. But if we have a print going on a machine, well, we have to check on it to know if it's done. We have to check on it to know if it looks like a bowl of spaghetti. So that's where the Sonic Pad comes into play because as I previously mentioned, you can just open up your phone or your iPad and you can just see the progress. You can see, yes, the print is done or no, it's not done. And if you have a camera plugged into your Sonic Pad, you get even more information because you can load the camera up and you can actually see with your own eyes the progress of the print. You can see if the print has failed or if it's continuing on as it should. Now this is getting into a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I have every printer and every Sonic Pad hooked up up to a smart outlet and there's one reason why I do that. That's because the room that my printers and my computer are in, it's very small. It's a very tiny guest bedroom. It was not meant to house all of this equipment. So navigating from one location to the next is actually hard. Sometimes there's tons of things in the way. Not to mention I do YouTube. Sometimes I have a YouTube set built and I have to literally walk under a table to access the printers. Having everything on a smart outlet means on my computer desk I can click my Elgato Stream Deck, the power on button, and what do you know, a printer turns on. And then I click the Sonic Pad on button, and what do you know, the Sonic Pad turns on. And because the Sonic Pad is now Wi-Fi, I'll just give it two minutes. I'll go on my computer and I'll navigate to the Sonic Pad. I'll navigate to my Ender 6 and I'll click the print button. And I started a print all from my computer desk without having to get up. Now, this will benefit other people in other ways, not just me, because the possibility of being able to print from your bed or being able to print from the living room or anywhere is a really, really good advantage. So being able to have Wi-Fi enabled on any printer is a huge, huge advantage. I cannot do a full review of Clipper within this video because I don't have the time to do it, nor do I really have the brains to do it, which is the main reason. But what I want to do is at least mention a couple of the seriously, seriously important factors about Clipper that you get using the Sonic Pad versus using something stock like the Marlin firmware built into your printer. If you're looking to do a calibration on a printer such as residence compensation or in Marlin's case, input shaping, which they only just got in December of 2022. If you're looking to do something a little more advanced like that, the handbook is incredible. Go to the Clipper handbook and look at the residence compensation page and there's beautiful pictures. There's very, very clear instructions on what you need to do, how you need to do it, and you're never going to find a better handbook. Calibrating a 3D printer often requires custom G-code commands and you can't send custom G-code commands without a terminal. And that's something that you just simply don't get on a stock machine. Even though it has a full color touch display, maybe you don't have the ability to send custom G-code commands. So getting the Sonic Pad and being able to use that on any printer is going to allow you the ability to have a terminal to type in some custom commands and then calibrate very, very easily. 
any calibration, any of them, every single calibration is easier on Clipper. Creality has been updating the firmware on the Sonic Pad, which is a serious win in my book, because if you take a look at pretty much any printer in this room or in any other room, the manufacturers, they make the firmware and they don't touch it. And once the printer goes for sale to the markets, the firmware is dead. They're not modifying it. And I have personally used machines, whether it's Creality or Anycubic or Elgoo, it doesn't matter. I have personally used machines that had very clear, obvious bugs in them, in the firmware, on the touch screen and they just don't want to fix them. So I'm not singling anyone out, but it just happens and it's a really big win that the Sonic Pad is getting regular updates. Maybe the part of the video where everyone has been wanting to get, and that is Clipper on a Raspberry Pi versus Clipper on a Sonic Pad. Which is better and why? The short answer is if you are rich, go for a Raspberry Pi if you want. If you are a very smart engineering brain kind of person, go for a Raspberry Pi if you want. But if you don't have $400 in your pocket to spend on Raspberry Pis, because we live in a world where a $20 Raspberry Pi costs you $100 on eBay. If you don't have the money to buy one Raspberry Pi per printer, which you would need, then opt for the Sonic Pad. If you don't get the Sonic Pad on sale, it costs $160. If you do get the Sonic Pad on sale, you might be able to get it as low as $140. And and $140, you can run four printers on one Sonic Pad versus having to buy four individual Raspberry Pis to load one printer per Pi. Another part of that is Raspberry Pis are very time consuming. That means you would have to install Clipper on every single Raspberry Pi. And if you aren't a very engineering brain kind of person, that might take you even an hour to two hours per printer. If you're doing four printers, that might be up to eight hours of installation. With the Sonic Pad, I installed Clipper on four printers in less than 30 minutes. It might have even been less than 20 minutes. That's how quick it was. It was very, very easy, very intuitive, just very clear all around, very quick. And the thing that rules all, why would you run on a Raspberry Pi when you can only put one printer on a Raspberry Pi. That's the whole thing I've been hitting home about the Sonic Pad from the beginning. The Sonic Pad can run four printers, which means four printers can share the same file system. Imagine having four Ender 3s or four Prusas or four Elgu Neptune 2Ss. It doesn't matter. Four of one machine, you have that printer and you load one G code file onto the Sonic Pad and every single printer can print from that singular one file. If you have Raspberry Pis and you have one Pi per printer, you have to load the file onto that pie and load the file onto that pie and you have to do that four times and again you get into almost the same situation you were in if you were using one SD card per printer oh gosh <laughs> I know I sound like a car salesman to you but this has been the single number one most important upgrade to my print farm to date and I do not believe that there will be anything that comes and is better and beats out the Sonic Pad unless there is a Sonic Pad like upgrade that supports more than four printers.